Step 7. Cut out a stocking pattern. Use some white butcher paper to make your pattern. Chances are you already have a Christmas stocking in your house, so you could use that to make your pattern. Just cut around it and add a seam allowance, maybe a half an inch to five-eighths of an inch. If you don't have a stocking that you can use, just go to google.com and do an image search for Christmas stocking pattern, and then you can just pick out one that you like. Step eight, cut one of your pattern out of the white muslin fabric. This first cutout stocking piece is going to be the foundation for your crazy quilt piecing. Make sure to decide which way you want your stocking to face, to the left or to the right. You might even want to mark an X on the top side with your pencil if you need to, to remember which side is the top. Step nine, piece your crazy quilt stocking top. If you haven't done this type of sewing before, I think you'll be surprised how really easy it is to do. While there's no one set pattern for this project because each stocking is unique, there are some basic guidelines to follow. First, count up how many individual fabric pieces with photographs you're going to have. Now, my stocking had quite a few, about 10. I kept the images small, and the fabric pieces are not much bigger. They just frame each image. If you want to make it easier, consider just doing five or six images. Keep in mind that you'll want to evenly distribute them across your stocking. Start at the toe of the stocking and fit your first piece. Keep in mind where your seam allowance is. You can even draw it onto the muslin with your pencil if you want to. Fold over about a half an inch of the fabric on the side where it's going to butt up against the next fabric piece. And that way you can just slide the edge of the next piece right under that folded edge you'll have a nice finished looking edge. Pin each piece in place. As you work, keep ironing that half inch edge over on the various sides of the pieces as needed so that when they overlap, it looks like a nice finished edge. And you only need to fold the edge that overlaps over the other piece of fabric. Don't iron both pieces of fabric on the same edge under because then your seam is going to end up too bulky and it might be difficult to sew over later. The nice part is that you aren't sewing but rather just pinning right now so you can move things around until you have a pleasing design. And be sure to incorporate an area where you can embroider the name of the owner of the stocking as I did here. Step 10, straight stitch a basting stitch to hold down seams. Now you're going to use your sewing machine with a basting stitch, which is a nice, long, straight stitch that you can take out later. And you're going to sew along the edges where the pieces meet to hold them down securely. Remove the straight pins as you sew. All you need is a basting stitch. I set my sewing machine on the longest available stitch. Work your way around until all the seams are sewn down. Step 11, trim your threads. You'll have a lot of thread ends all over the front and the back of your stocking where you started and stopped basting. Use your sewing scissors to trim these out of your way. And don't forget to trim the threads on the back side of the stocking as well. Step 12, trim fabrics to match foundation fabric. Turn your stocking top upside down and using your sewing scissors, carefully trim the excess fabric that hangs over the edges of the muslin foundation fabric. Step 13, embroider seams. Now is the part I really enjoy. It's time to embroider the seams. As you can see on the finished stocking, each seam has a pretty little embroidery pattern done up in a satiny, color-coordinated embroidery floss. If you're a cross-stitcher, you already have some of this around the house. Just pick out colors that are going to complement your fabrics and start with one seam. You can choose one embroidery pattern stitch and do all the seams that way, but in true crazy quilting style, I like to mix it up. Now here are some examples of stitches that I like to do. There's the star, the bird footprint, crosses, and this one sort of looks like waves or curls. Use your imagination, copy these stitches, or do a Google image search on embroidery stitches or crazy quilt stitches, and that should give you some ideas. A strand of embroidery floss has six strands inside of it. So cut a section of thread, 
divide it in half, and then just use three strands at a time to do your stitching. Keep your stitches close to the folded edge and close together so that your seams remain secure. When you've finished your embroidery, you can then carefully and slowly remove your basting stitches with a seam ripper if they're visible. Step 14. Add embellishments if desired. Now, I like bling, so for me, adding embellishments offered an opportunity to dress up the stocking even further while also adding to the story that I wanted to tell. I rummaged through my sewing boxes where I keep broken pieces of jewelry, old pins and charms, and buttons, and selected items that would coordinate and be meaningful on the stocking. For example, I had this old pin with little sewing utensils dangling from it, and it was perfect because many of these women, again, were seamstresses and quilters. Here I have this little vintage stick pin of a cuckoo clock that I secured next to the image of my German great-grandmother. And this little star pin is attached to the image of my grandmother, who had theatrical aspirations and performed in several plays in school. And of course, I had to attach my own genealogy gem rhinestone pin, which I secured discreetly with thread that would blend in so as not to be seen. And finally, I have always loved buttons ever since I was a very little girl, and my mother would let me dump out her Folgers coffee can of buttons and play with them on the floor while she was sewing at the sewing machine. So I've added a few buttons that give it just the right amount of button bling. Again, have fun with it, mix and match, and try different locations for your embellishments until you feel it's harmonious. Step 15. Cut out and sew the backing. For my stocking, I chose a floral fabric for the backside. It's a fabric that I also used for pieces on the front. So iron out your fabric, lay your stocking top face down onto the right side of the backing fabric, and cut a single piece out of the backing. Pin the front to the back, and then sew them together with a straight stitch on your sewing machine, leaving the top of the stocking open. Then just trim the seams and clip the curves and then you can turn your stocking right side out. Step 17, create the stocking lining. For the lining of my stocking, I chose this pretty blue satin fabric that was also used for a few pieces on the stocking top. Fold the lining fabric right sides together, iron it, and then lay your pattern piece down, pin it, and cut both pieces out so you'll end up with two pieces of fabric. Remove the paper pattern and then pin the two pieces back together again. Then you can sew the lining together as you did the stocking with the right sides together using a straight stitch on your sewing machine and leaving the top open. Now, normally at this point when sewing something, you would turn the item right side out. But in this case, we're going to leave it just as it is. Step 18. Insert the liner. Put your hand inside the liner and then insert it into the stocking, being careful to push it all the way down into the toe and the heel areas. Step 19. Finish the top. Now that your liner is inside the stocking, you're going to need to finish the top edge by folding the liner over about a half an inch or so toward the stocking, and then fold the stocking fabric about a half inch toward the liner, and then iron them down together. There's no one right way to finish the edge. On my stocking, I use some upholstery braid or cording that you might also use, say, on a pillow, which has a beautiful coil at the top, and an area down below that can be sewn into the item. It takes a bit of finessing, but just take your time and slip that flat portion of the cording in between the liner and the stocking and then pin it down. Then you can just hand sew it together with a needle and thread. A hem stitch works really well for this. The idea here, of course, is that you're trying to hide the stitching so that all you see when it's done is the beautiful cording trimming the top edge. Another option, though, is to do a cuff like I did on the cowboy stocking. To do this, just make sure that you add several inches to the top of your lining pieces when you're cutting the fabric. Then at this step, you can fold a half inch down iron it down, and then fold the cuff over the top of the stocking, which gives you a nice finished edge. You'll have to plan ahead a bit to ensure that you don't place anything really important at the very top of the stocking, only to be covered now by the cuff. 
So keep your photographs and your embellishments lower down on the stocking, and then your cuff is going to give you a really nice place to embroider the name, which, if the name is up there, it's going to give you a little more room down below for your photos. Whether you do a finished edge with cording or a cuff, this step is all you need to secure the lining to the stocking. And finally, step 20, attach a loop for hanging. A stocking isn't a Christmas stocking unless you have a way to hang it from the fireplace mantle. And we're going to fashion a simple but sturdy loop from our fabric remnants. I recommend using the same fabric as your lining since you are going to be sewing the two pieces together. So simply cut out a rectangle approximately about 12 inches long and about 4 to 6 inches wide, depending on how wide you want the loop to be. Then iron it down, fold it right sides together lengthwise and iron it again, and then machine stitch the long edge together. Turn it right side out, and then fold over each of the short ends about a half an inch and iron those down. That's going to give you a way to attach it to the inside of the stocking. Then fold the entire strip in half and iron it to form a loop. Position the ends inside the top of the stocking on the heel side and hand stitch those folded edges down and then stitch over the whole thing again just to kind of make sure it's really securely reinforced. You want it to be sewn in sturdy but discreetly so that it can hold lots of Santa's goodies. And when you're done, you have a wonderful coordinated loop to use to hang your stocking by the chimney with care. And there you have it. You have created not only a beautiful Christmas stocking, but also a priceless family heirloom. An heirloom that tells a family history story and pays tribute to those who came before. I really hope that you've enjoyed this instructional video and this project. The possibilities for this type of project and using iron-on transfers are really endless. I hope you'll share this video with your family and friends who also enjoy sewing and crafts and family history. And I invite you to join me at genealogygems.com, where you can listen to my free Genealogy Gems podcast for more ways to create lasting items that are going to inspire your family to want to know more about the family history. And in each episode, you will learn the techniques on how to trace that family tree yourself. So thanks for watching and listening, friend. I'll talk to you soon.